click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, welcome back to the subject of Machine Design 1. We are right now in model number 4 where we are learning about the design of different machine components which undergo the varying loads. In last session we have solved one of the examples on determining how the straight concentration factor affects the design. In today's session we are going to look at a different example where again we are going to use the stress concentration factor to find out the dimensions. So let us proceed with the example. So students, you can see the numerical on the screen. It says that this is non-rotating shaft which supports the given load. We need to determine the dimensions of the shaft. If the material is a brittle material with a certain strength given and the factor of safety is specified. We need to look at the example where these are two ends where the shaft is supported by the bearings. At the end, at the middle portion of the shaft, it is supported by a transverse load of 2.5 kN. You can see the dimensions of the diameter of the shaft are given in terms of the letter D. Where this, if this diameter is D, this middle portion diameter has been increased to 1.1 times the diameter D. Whereas the fillets given at each end has the radius 0.1 times the diameter. So with this particular specification, we need to identify the areas or the regions which will be susceptible to the failure or fatigue failure because uh, we need to consider this trace concentration factor. It is very clear that from the given example, there is a variation of cross section only in this region, which is the middle region because the main shaft has the diameter D whereas the middle portion has the enlarged dimension. Also the uh, radius or the fillet radius has the variation so these are the two regions where the failure is prominently possible where the middle portion and the fillets moving ahead let us look at the beam section of this particular shaft if it is supported by the transverse load it's very clear that two ends will have equal reactions and they will be 1250 newton each therefore like we have discussed critical failure regions are center span and the fillets let us look at the fillet well. Let us find out the stress at the fillet. Now students, it's very clear that only the bending stresses are acting on this particular member because though it is a shaft, it's not rotating. So definitely the transverse load will put this under the bending and that's why the stress that is acting at the fillet section is nothing but the bending stress. And that is used the bending equations to find out this bending stress. Of course, it's a modified one, but we have already solved so need not go to the derivation part of this. Now it's the bending stress. Let's substitute the values that we have. If you look at in terms of the reaction, the fillet section is at a distance of 350 from the reaction and that's why bending moment will be this much pi. The area of cross section basically refers to the same dimension that is diameter D. And therefore, as we solve this particular expression, we'll get certain value. Let us not evaluate it for time being. Now, let us talk about the stress concentration factor. We know that at this region, the stress is going to be concentrated. Now, let us use the relations to find out the stress concentration. Now, if you look at the diameter, related diameter and their ratio, we will get something as 1.1 and as far as the radius of the fillet is concerned we will get 0.1 as the answer moving ahead with this data using phd data book from the section of stress concentration factor it is very clear that for the d by d ratio is 1.1 and small r to d ratio 0.1 for this particular data it is very clear that the stress concentration factor kt is equal to somewhere around 1.61 now this we can definitely refer to the stress concentration factor chart so that the maximum stress that may occur just because the stress is concentrated will be given by kt into the actual stress that is possible which comes out to be 1.61 
into the earlier expression that we have derived is 32 into 1250 into 350 divided by pi d cube. As we evaluate it further, we will get the maximum amount of stress that is possible is somewhere around this particular value. So in short, this is the enhanced value of this stress in terms of diameter D when the stress concentration factor is considered in the fillet region. Now let us find out the similar results in case of the middle span. Now students we know that the middle span will also be susceptible to the bending stresses because it's the bending which it is going under. The formula remains the same, no change in formula. Somehow the answer will be Now in terms of diameter of this particular shaft, the diameter will have a value 1.1 times the diameter of the shaft. Whereas this is the middle span. Now we know that the total distance, the total length of this particular beam is 1000. And that's why half the portion will be 500. The substitutive values, the only value that we are going to change is this, which is going to be 1.1 times the small diameter D. And if we evaluate this, we'll get the answer. Somewhere around this answer. Now, there is no stress concentration that's happening at this center. It's just because the area of cross section is changing, we are considering this region. That's why on comparing equation number one and two or the expressions one and two, it is very clear that the stress that is occurring in the fillet region is maximum. And therefore, on comparing stress at fillet region, is maximum and therefore sigma max as we have occurred it is which is the final expression that we have obtained now our purpose is to find out the value of diameter for which the maximum stress can be considered but students we know that for the given material the maximum possible or the safe stress will be the ultimate stress divided by factor of safety the ultimate stress we have been given is 300 whereas the factor of safety is 3 which makes it 100 newton per millimeter square and therefore let's equate these two values upon solving we'll get the answer 41.55 millimeter now it's the actual design value but we need to go for the preferred value now it is very clear that the diameter d is inversely proportional with the maximum stress so as the diameter increases the stress decreases and therefore a preferred value of diameter could be 42 millimeter which is our answer which is the designed diameter of shaft where the answer gets completed so students here we have demonstrated in what manner the stress concentration factor enhances the actual stress that was possible in the fillet region and that's why in order to consider the stress concentration factor this is the procedure which we have followed in the next session we are going to look at a different term that is called fatigue failure and we'll try to understand different aspects associated with it thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video please subscribe to eager thank you